Hey, good morning, Asbury Church. It's a good day to be together. Uh, I'm Tom Carver, senior pastor here at the church, and we're here to continue and actually finish up our sermon series about Go Fish. And the objective for today is that you will remember the importance of uh, what it is to be fishers of men and women and how we want to go fish out in the communities around us. You know, to get us started this morning, uh, Joe Buck has recorded uh, a great hymn, uh, Here Am I, Lord. And so um, uh, let's start our time of worship by listening to Joe Buck sing, uh, Here Am I, Lord. I, the Lord of sea and sky, I have heard my people cry. All who dwell in the dark and sin, my hand will save. I am who made the stars of night, I will make their darkness bright. Who will bear my light to them? Whom shall I send? Here I am, Lord. Is it I, Lord? I have heard you calling in the night. I will I will hold your people in my heart. I, the Lord of snow and rain, I have borne my people's pain. I have wept in love of them. They turn away. I will break their hearts of stone, give them hearts for love alone. I will speak my word to them, whom shall I send? Here I am, Lord, is it I, Lord? I have heard you calling in the night. I will go, Lord, if you lead me. I will hold your people in my heart. I, the Lord, of wind and flame. I will tend the poor and lame. I will set a feast for them. My hand will save. Ines bread I will provide till their hearts be satisfied. I will give my life to them. Whom shall I send? Here I am, Lord. Is it I, Lord? I have heard you calling in the night. I will go, Lord, if you lead me. I will hold your people in my heart. Hey, thank you, Joe. Uh, the good news, uh, Jesus has called us um, and has sent us on a mission to hold uh, his people in, in uh, his heart and that we'll go and, and uh, go where he calls us. 
Hey, I'm Tom Carver, the senior pastor here at the Asbury United Methodist Church, and glad to be with you this morning. Uh, I want to share some of the announcements, uh, just things uh, happening in the life of the church. Uh, first of all, today uh, at 11.15, we're going to be sharing a drive-in communion uh, at, uh, uh, at the parking lot right across the street from the church. So the idea is that uh, to have the sacrament of communion uh, today, uh, maintaining the social distance and the safety, uh, people can actually drive in, uh, come to the church. Uh, 11.15 this morning after worship should be enough time if you want to come down and join us. Uh, we'll share the sacrament right there in the parking lot. Bring your own elements, uh, juice and bread of some type, and uh, we'll... Uh, pray together. We'll consecrate those elements. You can stay in your car, be safe that way, uh, but then share in the Lord's Supper, kind of a unique way for this time of, uh, in this season of our lives, uh, but it's a way that we can break bread to, together uh, in person. And so uh, today at 1115, you're welcome to come and, and join us. Now also today, this is kind of a secret, uh, but Bill and Betty Houston are celebrating their 73rd wedding anniversary. And some folks from the church want to do a kind of a drive-by parade for them today. And so uh, they live on Brown Street right near what was Thomas Jefferson School, just west of the church here. And so uh, people are going to gather about 1215 on Brown Street west of their home and then have a chance to drive by and give our love and greetings uh, to Bill and Betty Houston. Again, I won't say how old they are, uh, but I will say this, they're celebrating their 70 third wedding anniversary. And so uh, certainly prayers of uh, joy and thanksgiving uh, for uh, Bill and Betty Houston. And if you're able to come down 1215, uh, meet uh, west of their house on Brown Street, uh, then we'll drive by and share, them, uh, share with them uh, our love today. Otherwise, here in the sanctuary with me uh, this morning, Gail Baldwin is at the piano. Uh, Pat uh, uh, Thornton is actually joining me as our lay liturgist today, and we hope to have uh, some vent adventures together. Uh, Mike Brand is up in the sound booth, and Amber Jerson is uh, running with some of the tech things as well. Uh, we had our 8 o'clock service, and it was one of those things we had rain. We had all kinds of, of uh, exciting adventures with our technology today. So if you're at home, just say a prayer that things are going to work out all right, and I'll bet they will. So um, with that, uh, otherwise, we're glad you're here. Um, and at this point, we want to uh, invite uh, uh, Pat to share our uh, prayer concerns, uh, and then uh, I'll introduce the scriptures, Pat, and we'll go to the scriptures then after that. So, Pat, glad you're here. Thanks for joining me. Thanks. Let me do that again. I'd like to say good morning to everybody. It's a pleasure to be here in the sanctuary with you. Um, it's wonderful to be able to share the prayer requests of our church members. Um, we did have one that came in this morning at our 8 o'clock service. It was offered uh, on behalf of uh, Bob Glenn, who is a friend of Rich Nobles, and he has been hospitalized with COVID. I uh, would also like to offer prayers for Mike Brand's brother, uh, who has also tested positive for COVID. And as Mike said, uh, so far the symptoms have been mild. So we will continue to pray for both of them. Uh, we also have a few of our church members who are out of town. Uh, we've got some folks. I think the Weinigers are in Indiana. Uh, I think uh, we've seen the Stelks, perhaps, uh, is in Minnesota. Tom is in Minnesota with friends. He's fishing. Uh, what a wonderful thing to be doing on a day like today. Uh, again, as uh, Pastor Tom mentioned, uh, we celebrate the 73rd anniversary of uh, Bill and Betty Houston. And, uh, and again, it's just a wonderful thing to be able to offer up prayers. Um, I'd like to remind you all that we uh, have a number of ways that you can submit prayers to the, to the prayer ministry team. Uh, you can submit them on the Facebook live feed, uh, as some of you are doing today. So just go ahead and enter your prayers into the comments. Uh, we go back through and we capture all of the comments from the, that are submitted, and we uh, pull the prayers and praises out and add those to our list. 
We also have the uh, way you can uh, offer them through jesusisthebridge.org, jesusisthebridge.org, our website. There you'll find a box that you push, and it's got a few things that you fill in, and that gives us the information for those prayers. And it's also uh, okay to just give us a call. Pat, Pam or I, were in the directory, and you can also give Gail uh, or uh, Patty Swagler a call in the church office, and she'll get those to us as well. I did mention at the 8 o'clock service that uh, since we began our ministry in May of this year, uh, we've already received, um, we have 41 active prayers that we're praying for right now, and um, we've already received and completed 123 uh, prayers. So again, it's a true blessing for the prayer ministry team to be allowed to pray for your needs, so we'd ask you to please continue uh, submitting those to us. At this time, I'd like to uh, uh, pray the unison prayer. And if you can pray with me. Here I am, O oh Lord, prepared to follow where you lead and serve your people. We have heard you calling us in the night and we are prepared to go. Where you send us, we will follow until all your people have heard of the love that you offer in your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Gracious God, we do praise you this day, and we thank you for all that you've done for us, and pray that you would work through us. As you've called us to go fish, and be fishers of men and women, we just pray that we would go in your name and share your love. Dear God, we're especially mindful of all those who are in need of a comfort and strength and healing. We pray for our nation, for our world, our leaders, uh, and those in our own community. Uh, who are suffering because of the pandemic, the COVID-19. We just pray for healing and comfort and grace uh, as we endure and we make adjustments and we get through. Gracious God, in all of it, we have hope because there's still so much to rejoice in and celebrate. 73 years of marriage for Bill and Betty Houston. Families that will gather this weekend uh, over a holiday observance. And while some things have changed, some things will always be the same. The love that you share with us in Jesus, the love that we share with one another, family, friends, congregations, neighbors, in all of it, we just pray for your spirit to see us through. We pray this in the name of Jesus who taught us to pray the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the forever. Amen. Okay, so Pat is going to share our scripture reading uh, this morning. And uh, um, Pat, if you're all right, let me introduce it just a, a bit. Um, 
And so uh, this is out of the Gospel of Luke, and it's the 10th chapter. And it's an important passage uh, that I think because it, it helps set up uh, the way in which Jesus calls us to go fish. Uh, there's some organization that he does, and, and it's very similar to chapter 9, where Jesus sent out, sent out the 12 apostles. Uh, you can see there chapter 9 of the Gospel of Luke. He sent out the 12 apostles, gave them uh, power and authority over the demons and, and to cure and to proclaim to all that the kingdom of God was near. So now to skip ahead to chapter 10, and here's where now we've gone from just 12 apostles to 70 or 72, depending on which uh, ancient manuscript you look at. But now it's dozens of followers of Jesus. And they're called now to go out two by two into all the places where Jesus meant to go. Again, this is an important passage for me because I think it, it summarizes, it gives us a way by which we can fulfill our calling. Uh, to make disciples of Jesus. And so th thanks, Pat, for letting me set that up. And here's now uh, uh, the Gospel uh, of uh, Luke, and it's verses 1 through uh, 10, or 1 through uh, uh, 10, uh, 9, but then it's going to skip ahead to verses 17 uh, through 20. After this, the Lord appointed 70 others and sent them on ahead of him in pairs to every town and place where he himself intended to go. He said to them, the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore, ask the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into the harvest. Go on your way. See, I am sending you out like lambs into the midst of wolves. Carry no purse, no bag, no sandals, and greet no one on the road. Whatever house you enter, first say, peace to this house. And if anyone is there who shares in peace, your peace will rest on that person. But if not, it will return to you. Remain in the same house, eating and drinking whatever they provide, for the laborer deserves to be paid. Do not move about from house to house. Whenever you enter a town and its people welcome you, eat what is set before you. Cure the sick who are there and say to them, the kingdom of God has come near to you. The 70 returned with joy saying, Lord, in your name, even the demons submit to us. He said to them, I watched Satan fall from heaven like a flash of lightning. See, I have given you authority to tread on snakes and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. And nothing will hurt you. Nevertheless, do not rejoice at this, that the spirits submit to you, but rejoice that your names are written in heaven. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Okay, thanks, Pat. Uh, so we're here in the church here, live watching uh, as you're watching where you're at. I'm going to check with Mike as up in the, uh, the sound booth. And so, Mike, uh, here's an idea. Could we maybe do the, the, the last song? Let's do that right now, and that'll give us a little bit of time to prepare. We'll do it. Okay, we're ready. All right. So here's what we're thinking about today. This is our last Sunday where we're with the theme of Go Fish. And so uh, oftentimes uh, we think about fishing in our day and age like a hook where we catch somebody and, and bring in a fish against its will. And so when Jesus was walking along the Sea of Galilee, he saw those uh, fishermen there. Uh, they were fishing by a method of casting their nets and, and pulling in their catch. And Jesus used that image to say to them, follow me and I will make you fish for people. And so that imagery that uh, uh, we've been thinking about all month is how do we do that? How do we fish for people and uh, make disciples of, of Jesus Christ? And part of what uh, I want to suggest to you today is as what we've been thinking about. It's not you know, grabbing hold of people and pulling them in against their will. It's actually kind of like wrapping your arms around them 
uh, walking with them, being with them and in a relationship, becoming a friend, becoming a connection, uh, uh, becoming a, a, a friend to them, showing you care, and out of that relationship, develop a, a trust so that they know you care about them, and out of that relationship then, to share your relationship with Jesus and introduce them to the love that God has shown to you, uh, to show it to them as well. Well, again, the, the passage that, uh, you know, Jesus, uh, um, or the passage that we share today now is, is sometime down the road after Jesus has been with those disciples. And again, in chapter 9, he sent the 12 out, uh, gave them authority, cast out demons. He had them come back, and he, then he brought them out to be alone to kind of talk about things. And, and everybody followed them, and so that's where there was that miracle where he fed uh, thousands of people. But now we see again where it's the same process, but instead of the 12, it's 70 or, or 72. And I want to suggest that there's a, there a process in here that we can learn and apply in our life and in our church. And there's three words that I think describe it. Those words are organize, authorize, and supervise. And here's how it works. Uh, first of all, there's some organization to accomplish a task. Uh, Jesus uh, had some organization. In Luke chapter 9, when there were 12 uh, uh, apostles, the 12 together, there's, a, there's some structure there. There's some organization. There's 12. There's not 13 or 10 or 9. And we think probably those 12 uh, may have represented the 12 tribes of Israel. Jesus building on what God had been doing throughout the Old Testament. And so uh, later on, there's enough structure so that when one of the disciples falls away, Judas, they, they draw stra uh, cast lots like drawn straws, but they have somebody else fulfill his place. The idea of an organization or a structure is that it enables a movement to last beyond the individuals that are within it. So as a church, we've got some structure, there's some organization, and part of that organized then is there's a, a structure, a role, a task, a job description, <laughs> and, and here Jesus now says to the 72, uh, for some organization, some structure, they're to go out in pairs, two by two, and they're given some, uh, an assignment, a job description, go to all the places where Jesus himself intended to go. And he says, uh, you know, he prepares them, saying, I'm sending you out like uh, wolves or like lambs among the wolves. But don't carry a bag or purse. I mean, go will live with the people. Share their life with them. And they'll feed you. I mean, they'll, they'll, they'll be with you. Again, he's sharing with them. Go be uh, with them. And then out of that relationship, out of that uh, uh, relation or that time that you're with them, uh, proclaim that the kingdom of God has come near. So Jesus gave them that instruction, that's the organization. And then organize, authorize. He told them, go in my name and represent me. He sent them to all the places where he in himself intended to go, but couldn't go by himself. And so we read where he says, I've given you authority uh, over the demons and the illnesses and to cast out uh, demons and so on. And, and uh, he said that to the 12. He also gave that to, to the, the, uh, the 70 or the 72. He authorized them. And you know, there's something that I'm learning too about uh, when you authorize somebody, you give them authority and then you let them do it. So within the church, we, we organize, we, we have positions and jobs and things, and then we authorize people to let them uh, take authority and try to perform the tasks that we've given to them. You know, I remember one time uh, uh, I worked with a good associate pastor in a previous situation, a previous church, and I was trying to help out and, and help this pastor grow, and, and uh, she was organizing a Sunday worship or kind of working with a worship team, and I thought I would just be there to help out. So I was in the back row, you know, just, just there in case she needed me. But she had the wisdom at one point to come up and, and ask me, would, you know, privately, but she said, would you please leave? And I was like, well, sure. Well, I mean, I was just trying to help. But, but we talked later on. And she helped me see that as long as I was in the room, I hadn't really given her authority. I hadn't authorized her to act. 
And because even at that point, you know, people were, she's giving instructions, but people would look back to me like, uh, is, this, is this okay? Can we do that? I mean, part of what I think Jesus did, he sent those disciples off on their own. He didn't go with them. He didn't micromanage. He didn't tell them to do this or that. He authorized them to represent him in all the villages, the places where he intended to go. And then he let him do it. Now, it's not the end then. It says that, uh, uh, you know, it's important if they welcome you, stay there. Let their peace be uh, among you. If they don't welcome you, then he said, you need to move on because it's a big job. We've got a lot of ground to cover. And so if they don't welcome you, then, then move on to the next community, the town, the families, the communities that will. But then organize, authorize, and supervise. Both when Jesus sent out the 12 in Luke chapter 9, they came back and he went off to a private place where they could talk. And here in Luke chapter 10, as Pat read, the 70 returned with joy. They were so excited, they said, to, Lord, even the demons submit to us. And Jesus, I can imagine, was, was proud of them and, and rejoicing on how God was working through them as well. And he said, I watched Satan fall from heaven like a flash of lightning. See, I've given you authority. There's that authorize. To tread on snakes and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing will hurt you. And surely this was a great, uh, you know, a great thing for those disciples and, and they were excited about it. But here's supervise. He's talking with them about it. He, how did it go? What did you learn? And in my interpretation, what I can imagine is Jesus says to them, okay, I've given you this authority. Things will go well. However, nevertheless, don't rejoice in this, that the spirits submit to you, but instead rejoice that your names are, are written in heaven. You see what that says to me, Jesus, uh, the supervisor, the supervision. Jesus would say, look, don't let it go to your head. Just be happy that you're a part of the kingdom of God, that your names are written in the book of life. Well, so here's, I think, the, the lesson then in terms of uh, how it is that we go fish. I mean, part of what my, my hope for us today is that uh, I'll leave you with the importance and an image and a thought about how we want to go fish. And part of what that means is we've got to get out of the building in order to be where the people are. Just like in the scripture reading today. Jesus sent them out to all the places where he intended to go. So as the Asbury Church, we're growing in our understanding and this pandemic has helped us realize that our mission really isn't only to get people into the building. It's actually to help prepare our people to go out into the neighborhoods and to be where the, the people are and to establish relationships and, and trusting and then sharing God's Word and doing God's will out, uh, outside the church. And so uh, part of what we're thinking about uh, today is... Uh, um, I'm sorry, excuse me. Um, it sounds yeah. from what you're saying like you're telling us that we really need to get outside of the building in order to be able to go fish. Well, yeah, Pat... Uh, that's right. I mean, I'm in the middle of a sermon here, but uh, we want to get out in the building or out of the building and, and uh, uh, go fish. You're absolutely right about that. But couldn't we do that right now? I mean, is that something we could do? Or, I mean, you said Jesus sent them out in twos, and how about the two of us go right now? You, Come with me. I've you, got an idea. You want to do that now? Yeah, if, you, if you're okay, let's go. I'll, I got an idea. All right, I'm, I'll, let me get my mask here. Okay. So, Pat, how come we're going this way? Well, uh, this is the direction that the place is. It's up along the river here, and 
I'm from Leclerc and it's a place that I know and I think it's uh, it's pretty popular there's usually quite a few people there and it's just something that I you know when you were talking about go fish and you know going out as Jesus asked the disciples to go out two by two or commanded them to go two by two you know I thought maybe it would be a good time for us to head up this way all right well, you know, it's one of the challenges right now, how to get out and be with the people when we've got to wear these masks. Oh, I know it. You know? I know it. Well, it's sure good that we're able to get together as long as we do it safely and wear our masks, wash our hands, and socially distance, that we can at least start to see one another face to face and, and talk about uh, talk about things with them. Well, that's part of what, you know, trying to think about how to go fish to be out with people. I mean, really changing our mindset from how do we get people into the church building to how do we get people out in the neighborhoods. So actually, and that's such a beautiful place. This is kind of your neighborhood around here in LeClaire, isn't it? It is. We moved here in 1983, and uh, other than a short stint back in Minnesota, this is where we called home. So wow. really enjoy it. I real blessing for me driving to work every day to get to drive along the Mississippi River and to see it as the seasons change is really, really wonderful. Wow, that is cool. Yeah, you know, you were talking about this neighborhood captain thing. I, I'm kind of curious, what, what all is that about? Well, what we're thinking about is how we can organize uh, where our people are at throughout the neighborhoods mm -hmm. of the Quad Cities and Bettendorf and LeClaire and so on. But we want to then authorize and prepare people who would uh, first of all, maybe check in and be aware of the other people from Asbury that live in their neighborhood. Okay. But also be aware of the other people that are just in the neighborhood. Oh, okay. Let's okay. say there's a moving van, um, somebody's moving in, that, you know, just be aware that's welcoming to your neighborhood. You know, establish friendships, relationships with people that are good just on their own. Okay, okay. Well, that makes a lot of sense. I, you know, we've got quite a few neighbors uh, where I'm at. It's out in the west part of Leclerc, and there's always people coming in, new folks. Um, we've had, I think, two or three neighbors uh, on one side of us since we've lived there. Yeah. You know, and it's also things like we just had the, the storms. Mm -hmm. Be able to check in on neighbors. Do they need any help or assistance or, you know, just somehow that uh, all together we're thinking about how do we develop friendships, relationships with people outside the church, uh, that's where we go fish. But it begins with, you got to be where the people are at. Okay, okay. Well, I'm, I'm hoping this is the kind of place that uh, might be what you were talking about. So, and like you were saying, the neighborhood thing, um, you know, we had some things blow out of our yard that we couldn't find, and uh, we went around and talked to some of our neighbors, and uh, we had a little damage to the house, too, and we got some good suggestions and um, had some good conversations with some of our neighbors. So, um, even though the storm was not a good thing, it, um, it was really great that we were able to have some conversations with our neighbors. And meet your neighbors that way. That is a cool thing. That's very yeah. good. Wow, Pat, this really is a great place. No wonder people would want to come here. Beautiful beach and uh, picnic area. Yeah, it really is pretty, isn't it? You just can't beat being on the banks of the Mississippi. And what a beautiful day today, isn't oh, it? Oh, it's gorgeous. Well, you know, our whole ser sermon series is about go fish. And a big part of it is just being where the people are. That's right. Getting out into the neighborhoods. We're thinking about doing neighborhood captains and so on. So mm -hmm. I'm hoping people will remember what we've been thinking about, how to go fish. But, but, but Pat, why did you want to come here? Well, to be honest with you, Oh, go fish, okay. Well, that's a great reminder of what we're called to do to be followers of Jesus, to be fishers of men and women, to go out into the neighborhoods where people are and develop relationships and introduce them to our good friend Jesus. Amen. All right, well, listen, jesusisthebridge.org as a way that we can share that with friends. But we're going to go in and get a quick bite to eat. And while we do that, uh, Peggy Hamilton and the world's most dangerous praise team have recorded another song that we'll sing now about being sent. And how about we get it to go and we can maybe get back to the sanctuary in time? Well, that sounds like a great idea. All right, let's go. All right. Jesus 
Great time. Yeah, wasn't that wonderful? Thanks for taking me out there, Pat. Yeah, you're very welcome. Well, I mean, that was our, our task for today, to remember to go fish. And the best way we do that is getting out in the community, being where the people are. And that was, that was a great time together. So thanks, uh, Pat. Well, so you've got your assignment now for today. And that is to remember the words of the Lord Jesus to go fish. And I hope uh, we've given you kind of a visual reminder anytime you go up to Princeton or remember that restaurant uh, that you think of today and remember the words from Jesus that I will make you fish for people. 
in that as a church we want to organize and authorize and supervise, but send people out of this building into the neighborhoods where the people are to establish friendships and relationships, to care for one another, to be the hands and feet of Jesus. And in doing that, uh, announce that the kingdom of God has come. And this is a good life. And God has something for us. All right, come back uh, next week. We'll look forward to starting a new sermon series about mountaintop moments and how uh, we experience God in those mountaintop moments, but uh, how God really can be a part of our daily lives and help us understand uh, a perspective that we can't ever have on our own. I hope you'll join us as we uh, live stream again next week at JesusIsTheBridge.org. We'll see you then. So now uh, receive this benediction. As you go out to be the hands and feet of Jesus, may you go to go fish in the neighborhoods, the communities where we live, and in doing so announce the good news that God's love is here and that our lives can be changed. And we do not go alone, but by the power, the love of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.